Hey, Ronnie Dahl, four wheeling in Western Australia.com, and welcome to Modified Episode 40. And here we have a very special rig, an 80 series that's had a, a lot of stuff done to it. So I think we better get the owner in now and find out exactly what's going on. Marco. Ah, hi, Ronnie. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So we have, um, before we start talking about the vehicle, German plates. Yep. So you're from Germany? Yeah, we are from Germany. And you're touring Australia in? Yeah, we're touring Australia in our 80 series. Been here 18 years ago for a year. And Doing the same thing 18 years ago? Uh, yeah, we, we toured around for a year. After that, as we went home, we had we deciding, oh, we get an old 80 series here in Australia. Okay. And we use that one for the normal holidays. But after a while, we decided we have to go the, a little bit longer again. And so I started this little project. Uh, so it's an 80 series, but... It's what? an 80 series, 93 model. Uh, it's a right-hand drive because I bought it from England. Because it's a little bit easier for here uh, to uh, drive around. And maybe after the trip, we leave it here. So you specifically uh, bought the vehicle for here? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Just in case you weren't aware, um, in most of Europe, you have a left-hand drive vehicles, just like um, in the US. Yeah. But uh, England is like Australia with the right-hand drive. It used to be a wagon, so you've cut yeah. it. We made a ute out of it, and we extended the wheelbase 500 mils, because the normal 80 series is too short when you want to put a cabin onto it. That's a fair extension. Oh, uh, yeah, but yeah. I think it works well, and it's nice to drive. So far, everything is fine. And yeah, we did a lot. Axles, new automatic gearbox, new transfer case, and the gearbox is upgraded. So we're in automatic gearbox. Yeah. And full-time four-wheel drive still? It's a constant four-wheel drive, yep. Constant four-wheel drive. Okay, so all that system still remains the same. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think we better dissect the vehicle because there's so much stuff here. Yeah. <laughs> So this vehicle being very different, instead of just doing bar work, we're going to do bar work and exterior on the actual cab. So I'm not going to include the camper on the back yet. So Marco, we'll start with the bar work. What type of bar is it? I uh, actually I built it. So this is a complete custom bar. Yeah, that's all complete custom bar. Everything Excellent. is out of aluminium. Only the carrier for the winch is steel. Oh, so this is all aluminium. Cool. That's all aluminium, yeah. Because I want to have so light as possible. But it's uh, five mil thick. It's also strong oh, enough. Yeah, strong aluminium. Yeah. So something I've noticed is this is detachable. Yep. From here and from here. Is that because so you can still use it in Germany? Yeah. Actually, uh, when you go to the road versus check, it has to be off because of the German rules. You got a winch, Dragon winch. It's a company in, in Poland. It's a Polish winch. And I choose this one because it's the only what I can find with a nine horsepower engine. And it's quite fast. It's only 9,000 pounds because it's so fast. So then I put a pulley in it, a roller, it's make a double, double, double line, line pull. pull when I have to use it. No underbody protection? Yeah, actually, I'm not a... You probably don't really need it. Not the biggest friend of the underbody protection I because hate. we had it, yeah. In Africa, we traveled a lot in Africa, and the cars were getting so hot. When you go in the sand dune, you're driving slow. You don't get any wind. Before, we had a lot of uh, underbody plates, but I took them it's all getting, off. getting too hot. Yeah. These plastic covers, and you got this, this key lock. Yeah, because normally what I'm not understand, when you got a massive bull bar, there's nothing behind it. Nothing behind it, waste of space. Yeah. Look at and that. so I got my grease, my grease gun, a oh. little bit oil. <laughs> On this side, I got my electric stuff, cables, fuses, and yeah, also some oils. And that's what you don't want to have in your car. That's just such a good idea. You can use that space and excellent. Or that's when you got winch cool stuff, uh, dirty winch st winch stuff, you can put the winch stuff into there. So off the side here, you got. You've got a uh, protection on your flares as well. Yeah, it's uh, also out of aluminium. It goes into the side bars. Yeah, down to your side step there. Yeah, and, the, and into the steps. Excellent. And That's a great idea. Yeah. 
And that extends your flare out too because you've got yeah. the bigger tyres. Clear view mirrors. So extendable ones because you're the trailer? Yeah, of the okay. trailer. And up here. That's very interesting what you've done here. So is this fiberglass? No, that's aluminium. Under there, it's because we cut it the, the cabin. We put like a little overall cage oh, yeah. into the car. And under there is extra steel frame. When worse things happen, you got a little bit more, a bit more protection. protection. And it serves as a roof rack too, I see. And it's all roof rack too, yeah. It's so a bit of a storm bag here. Uh, actually, that's it's our awning tent. Awning tent, okay. Yeah, because this time, the last time, it was more the touristy trip. And now we know a few nice spots. So now and it's more, more we want to go there and trip. we want to stay there. So we got that awning tent to more to get out of the flies when you go in the bush. Yeah, understandable. <laughs> <laughs> Many flies here. <laughs> Spare tire up there. Yep. So you just carried a one spare tire. Have you got another one on, in the trailer? Somewhere? One is in the trailer. Yeah. Another one in the trailer. Yeah. Okay. And they're all the same size as the trailer, so you can switch yeah, them around. Yeah, you can switch it around and it's the same mm, stud pattern. Yep. Of course they are. There's so much fork gone into this car. <laughs> <laughs> Cover your lights now. So these are for spread on the side. Yeah, they are a little bit to the sides. Mm. So when we have to drive at night, normally. We don't want to do it, but when we have to drive at night, it, uh, you got a little bit more light to the outside for the roof. They are the not spread. really fancy, it's quite simple. Yeah, okay. You mentioned you don't really like driving at night, so I'm guessing that's why I don't have your HRD distance spotties. Yeah, that's... I mean, this, this ones are little spotties, but the light is not so, yeah, it's, so great. It's, it, it's enough light. Yeah, it's enough. Now onto tyres, suspension and drive line because there's a lot going on with the drive line as well. A lot of changes. Yeah. So we'll start with your tyres. Yeah. So what have we got here? We've got Cooper Discovery STT. Yeah. 325, so 325 yeah. slash 80 yeah. on a 16 Six. inch rim. Yep. So what are we looking at there? Oh yeah, here we 37. 37. Yeah. 37 inch tyres, 13.13 and a half wide. Yeah. That's a decent bit of rubber there. Oh yeah, and I mean, you have to change a lot of things in the car to be that the car handles the big tyres. You have to change the duration in the, in the differential. And I'm now to down to 5.29. 5.29. 5.29. Substantial change. Yeah. It? What were they before? Would have been three. No, I think it was 4.10, something like that. 4.10? Yeah, okay. because I tried it with 4.56 and it was so nice. And then I went down to 5.29 and that's better. On the highway, it's still a little bit, especially when you get headwind. You're so, running out of yeah, running out of RPM. Yeah. But your low range will be pretty good though. The car is specially made for the beaches or for uh, getting into the bush mm -hmm. and then it's great it okay. works really well so when you're on the highway you're con you're restricted to 100 k's anyway because you have the trailer yeah but do you sort of sit on 90 to 100 oh, perhaps yeah. because of the ratio most times around 90 and then we are with roughly 2200 refs it's that's okay not, that's not too bad um considering the size tire and, and all that too your rims Original Toyotas. Original Toyotas, but you've you've sprayed them black. So they're aluminium. They are aluminium. Chrome alloy axles. I mean CVs. Yeah, the and, CVs and yeah. axles. Uh, actually, the axle shafts should be, should be chrome alloy also. With the back, is that chrome alloy as well, or you left that standard? No, that's a standard one. Standard axle. That is a standard one. Yep. Okay. And uh, also some RB air lockers in it. Because they are RB front and rear. Front and rear, yeah. Because the center should be a little bit more solid as the original Toyota one. What is your lift? Is it two or three inch? Two. Two inch. Two inch, yeah. You've done well to fit the 35, 37s in, yeah, in the we, two, but you've done all the bodybuilding, haven't you? Yeah, so. we cut it all the wheelhouse out because normally the wheelhouse from the 80 series goes out and goes down. Hmm. And I cut it all that out. Oh, and yeah. it was already rusted, so I cut it out and makes a nice flat wheelhouse. 
Yeah, I like how you've done the splash guard here. That's, that's really neat. What have you got? You've got tough, tough Dog in there. Yeah, Tough Dogs and Old Man Emu. Old Man Emu on the back. Yeah. Yeah, we got coils and pulley air airbags. Oh, so you got the, the internal airbags. The internal the airbags, yeah. Because it's turned into a ute, I'm just automatically thinking loose springs. <laughs> so that's excellent. So you still got your, your wheel travel in, in the back. Yeah. With the coil. And it's really nice and comfy. I mean, when when you go really yeah, in the corrugation or in the bumpy stuff, it's really nice. I mean, and yeah. especially with the longer wheelbase, it's because I got a normal 80 series at home, it's a big difference between the normal wheelbase and the longer wheelbase. Let's talk about your wheelbase. Probably longer than my wheelbase. How's your turning circle? <laughs> <laughs> like a super tanker <laughs> <laughs> because also we have to restrict the angle of the tires that oh. it's not rubbing too much on okay. the inside because they are so big turning circles probably as bad as mine uh on maybe worse maybe worse maybe worse yeah <laughs> we're now about to have a look at the power plant you've got a bit of a scoop there so you added that on yeah and there's a fan underneath it. Yeah, it's a top-mounted intercooler under it. So let's have a look. Yep. And the gas struts. They didn't come with the 80, did they? Yeah. They do? Yeah, they do. I'm feeling ripped off the 70. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have to go for 80 series. <laughs> That's the original motor. It looks like a little bit filthy because I, I sprayed everything uh, with some oil. When, when I go to the beach, uh, I don't want that everything gets rusty and yeah. all the aluminium. So I sprayed everything with oil and when we are back on the roads, so I, I rinse it off. Rinse it off, yeah. Now it looks a little bit. Yeah, but yeah. it gets used. Yeah. <laughs> if it was clean, I'd be worried. <laughs> So first thing I'm noticing are the batteries, but so you got two batteries, which one's for the back, which one's for the front, or are they both cranking? It's a 24 volt. Actually, uh, normally the European 80 series got a 24 volt starter engine. I changed it, I put a, out of the 100 series, the starter motor, then I came down to 12 volt. But the normal 80 series in Germany got 24 volt for starting and the whole car runs on 12 volt. It's one big relay mm. that everything is in 12 volt. Yeah, so it starts on 12 volt and everything's 12 volt. Yeah. So, but these are both cranking batteries? Uh, actually, that's the main cranking battery. And I can disconnect them with this little... Oh, the oscillator key? Yeah, because I like it simple. Not all this electronic stuff. Mm. And I know it's in or it's out. Yeah. And that's it. The only thing, what I forget at home to put the the battery mounts onto it, so I have to use the ropes now. Oh, you're using the straps, <laughs> yeah, okay. Because everything in the last days was a little bit in a hurry. So at least it's in a tight spot, so it's not yeah. really going to go anywhere. Diff breathers. Yeah, the diff breezes. One from each diff and and transfer case and gearbox on one. Yeah. Twin air compressor. Yeah, it's a twin air compressor does because that, of the big tires. Yeah, does that, that do your lockers though, or have you got a separate one the, for lockers? No, that's also for the lockers. Also I got a, lockers. I got a, a 12 liter tank under the car. Oh, it's, you can see the, the pipe goes on yeah. under the body. It's a tank, 12 liters. There are the shifters for the the air lockers over your place there. Oh yeah, here. Yeah. Do you get default coming out of this? Not. Yet. Oh, we yeah. had it with our old one. Mm. At least you're in the engine. Some yeah. people have them inside the cab. Ah, oh, no, that's maybe not a good idea. Also, <laughs> even when you don't get the oil, you get the, the smell of the diff oil. Yeah, the, the, the smell is the worst part. This is an air hose, right? That is an air hose, yeah. Coming off the air compressor as well? Yeah, it comes out of the tank because the air goes into the tank. Into the tank and then, then back out here. Can cool off a little bit and then back to there. And okay. I got another mount in the back of the car. Oh, excellent. So you got two hoses taking off the... Yeah. And I'm also filled the, uh, the poly airs with it. The springs, the airbags oh, and the, the springs. Oh, the airbags. Yep. Of the same Also Also same, yeah. No, not of the same line. They're all separate. I got the, uh, the shifters in, in the car and okay. some gauges that I can know or can see. I oh, can see how much pressure is in them. Yeah, we got the intercooler. 
And I got a, a G Power Turbo, also Australian stuff. Uh, G Turbo. Yeah, G Turbo. Yeah. And works well so far. How much boost are you, are you pushing? And do you have the? Do you have a winder? Oh uh, no, I don't have a winder. So it's just set it's, to one. Yeah, the lowest level for the 80 series, what he is making. Okay. And but I still because it goes up when you really kick him and you uh, use the kick down in the automatic. It goes up to 22, but I, I, I don't use it really. Normally when I drive around, I try to be on mm. 16, 14, 16. Okay, so it just sparks the 22. Yeah, you, it's only when, when you be somewhere at the beach and you need it to get back off the beach mm. only for a short time, then you kick him and... So in other words, you kept it as reliable as possible. Yeah, okay. an extra oil cooler for the automatic. Yeah the front there because we had some trouble in germany with the original automatic gearbox every time it was far above 90 100 sometimes 130 and that's why we went to, to wow. wholesales and that was in germany that was in germany yeah, yeah. so and here's it's gonna be a bit, a bit yeah usually. but now we got the bigger torque converter we are down to 90 95 oh, that's oh it's really good So we're back on the side of the vehicle, we're now going to cover the uh, the rear camper. Is yeah. that the appropriate name for it? Yeah, it's a camper. camper. Or, a, or a cabin. Cabin? Yeah. Yeah. The rear cabin? Yeah. Storage? That's the storage. Yeah. There are some recovery gear and some parts. Lexi's hammock, <laughs> outboarder, fishing rods, <laughs> the stands for, for the cabin. Fishing yeah. rods. Yeah. Fishing rods, all right. <laughs> One, yeah. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight? Is it eight? Yeah, maybe. So it's got... getting more and more, but now I'm running out of space. <laughs> <laughs> you got your big beach yeah, rod big, here. Yeah, big beach rods and the boat's rods. And yeah, beach yeah, rod, some... boat. Boat rods and and yeah maybe river, for river the river rods. river yeah okay I think he likes his fishing oh yeah I'm a little bit into fishing <laughs> just a little bit uh, just a little bit <laughs> <laughs> and I can fit the whole outboard motor in there like if the outboard motor I build a little box for it and you can slide the whole box to the other side out you got a lot of tubing here so that tells me that's you've a got stands. something that can come off that's a stance for this one so this because can, this can come off this one can come off yeah what oh, is your join yeah, here, goes up here, oh, wow. and then you still got your your tray, and you can park your cabin or your camper. On oh, leave for the day. Yeah, and you leave for a day, and but we do that only when we when we know we stay there for a week or something. Yeah, a week or two weeks. I don't want this winding handles mm. because they are so heavy. I made some aluminium tubings, and we lift up the whole car get the airbags quite high up and put a, a lot of air into the tires so that it's high up. Then we put the stands on. Oh, and then you I, let everything down. Yeah, then I have to put the, the air jack under the front axle to lift the car in the front that everything is level. And then uh, we put the stands on and when the stands are on, uh, we reduce the airbags uh, in the front and the airbags in the back. and let the car down, get the air out of the tire, and then we can drive off. Excellent. And it's done in pff, 10 minutes. What is that, a drain plug or? Uh, that's actually more storage. <laughs> that's our... No way. That's the wires for the solar, because we got solar on top of the cabin, and solar on the sides. Here, when you look at that solar panel here. Yeah. I can undo the screws and then I take the solar panel out and I can put it in the sun and undoing here and oh, then you put, got the extension tool. and then put the extension cord into it. Wow. And I have also an extension cord from the cabin to the car. Okay. When we park the car on the side, when, when we get the cabin off and we park the car on the side, mm. then we can connect the car and the, the camper together. So basically, if you want to break down in the middle of nowhere, this is the vehicle you want to do it in. Because <laughs> you could basically set yourself up. Yeah. 
you can stay for a long time and because now we got 400 watts of solar power and 400 that, watts yeah and that's tons yeah. we can charge when everything is really empty we can charge with 20 amps and that fills up in no 20, time 20 amps <laughs> that's insane yeah excellent so to charge a 100 amp battery would be like five hours yeah that's right charge, just yeah. off solar yeah that's incredible fuel and that's also fuel water it's only a little a little hose in here you get it out and fill it fill the water like this oh, okay. puts another stick another hose in stick a hose in and fill it up all right and so with your diesel how many liters in, in total two bigger tanks in the front they have each roughly 120 125 liters so we got 250 Good range in the middle of the car yep and then we got in the back uh, where you got normally your spare wheel another two tanks with yep. 70 liters each but we use them only when we really know that we have to go for a long distance because okay. of the weight so you got three uh, 390 liters uh, actually we use one of this tank in the back that's our separate water tank okay like our wasting water your grey water? Yeah, you are not really grey water. It's it's more for washing your hands oh, or, okay. and and the good water for the inside for drinking and stuff. for drinking we got in the car. Okay, how big is your other water tank then? Uh, hundred. It's 100 two liters. two tanks, fifty liters each, because I don't like one big tank. When something breaks, you lose all your water, okay. or when you have to take some water, and the quality is not so well, you ruin only one tank and you can keep still keep the better water in, in, in that other tank the other side of the storage is yeah. it pretty much the same or uh and here chairs and the camping table and fuel for the outboard uh no it's that's fuel for our stove because we got the dual stove uh in coleman so i got my fire cooking gear because when we're up in the north i like to cook on the fire camp oh, often yeah. and 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 the barbie and i think we should hop inside now yeah so that's storage again that, that's our um, because our garbage when we be somewhere and we don't want to have the garbage in the car we put it in there and here's also the other air hose oh yeah to fill the trailer so this is where you sleep that's where we sleep yeah All right, so we're going to go inside and have a look now. It's a little bit confined, so I'll bring the other camera in. So here we are inside. It's pretty cozy in here. Oh yeah. So what, what is that? Is that okay? Uh, I open it up. Oh, look at that sunroof. When it's get a little bit hot. Oh, sunroof open. So. This table, I take it, will go down and then we have the bed on top? Yeah, normally we get every time only the bed set, up, set it up because everything is outside, cooking okay. and everything. But when it's a quite miserable day, we can go inside. So behind you there, is that that's all storage compartments? Yeah, that's some storage compartments. And it's quite full. <laughs> yeah. And because on our first trip here in Australia, because we were also standing a lot of, on the beaches and the clothes in the cupboards were getting moldy and so this time I decided to go over to like a mesh to get ventilation into it. Oh, so I can breathe a bit better. Yeah, then it can breathe a bit better and it's also a little bit lighter. I poked my head into the cab before yeah. and I noticed you had a hole in the back of the cab to here. Is, is, there, yeah. is that access there? That's, uh, it's exable and of course you can take this one off. But here are some storage bags and when, when you are sitting it's nice uh, like you can lean on it and it's soft and comfy because all the pillows Oh. And all the bedding stuff is in there. When we want to sleep, we got the bedding stuff out, setting up the bed, and 
then you can push them back to the walls and then you have your space. <laughs> and that's the same with these as well? Same on that side, yeah. All the same bedding and stuff. Yeah. Oh, and a bit of a nightmare here, is it? Yeah, that's, yeah. It's an LED from Os Osram. Yeah, that's quite nice. And we got also this LED light stripe all around. Oh, all around. This yeah. video. Excellent. Yeah. That we can have yellow or red light. Oh. And because it's much better with insects. Yeah. When you got red light in, in the car, uh, then nearly no insects comes into the car. Excellent. Yeah. So what do we got here? Oh, is that the fridge? That is our fridge, yeah. Normally we plan to put an angle an angle fridge into it because we are really into angle we use the angle fridges for all the traveling time but as i put the angle in here it not fit to the rest of the cabin uh. and then i decided to to build one and so you built this fridge yeah and i built this fridge What size is that? 80? Oh 60? no, 60. 60 liters? 60 liters. And uh, here, the batteries. The batteries in there. Oh yeah. And yeah, a lot of stuff. And more fishing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> There's a sink, but it's not really used as a sink. Okay. Lexi wants to have a sink. And so, now it's everything what's loose in the cabin, it comes into the sink. So all, all these are storage too then? Yeah, that's storage too. Uh, oh wow. Oops. We like to have our stuff in, in boxes. When you cook outside, you can take the box out. And when you stay a little bit longer, you leave it out in the box. Excellent. Good idea. Plenty of storage here. So you've got all these compartments basically. Yeah. Really heavy stuff in here. Oh, here it's quite full. That's, that's our fuel stove. What we got there? Ah, chemical toilet. Chemical toilet. Yeah. And those are a necessity here in definitely Western Australia lately. You get kicked out of places if you don't have them. Yeah. And I can never send that. Here are all my all your spares. All my spare parts. Ah, even your wheel studs. Oh, actually, there's a lot of stuff in there because there are also some the whole CVs and front axles and uh, yeah, everything. I got the crown wheel and pinion for front and rear diff also. I have it all with me. Everything what I can repair on my own, uh, I have it with me. This is a serious thought out vehicle and a serious thought out planned trip with all those spares and, and all that. Wow, I honestly didn't expect to see all this standing on the outside. You know, I thought it was just, gonna, you know, like, you know, not just a camp. I mean, this, yeah. Yeah, it's quite comfy. Definitely made, definitely made use of every every bit of space. Yeah. So you got fiberglass around a aluminium skeleton. Yeah, that's a welded aluminium frame. Makes it much more strong as a cabin when you get the welded frame. And then we got glass fiber plates, and the glass fiber plates are also out of a special material. It's called roving. It's really? like a woven with a glass fiber. It's, it's like really like woven, like a woven oh, mat. Right, yeah. And then you put the glue into it and it's much more solid. And so you can reduce the thickness of the glass fiber plates. And that makes the camper also a little bit lighter. How much weight are we talking? Unloaded. Actually, the cabin with the furniture, uh, it's 240 kilos. 240 kilos? 240 kilos. Wow. That is uh, light. Yeah, but it's because we got the tray under it. When you have the camper with no tray, you have to make the bottom a little bit more solid. Then you are around maybe 300, 300 something. 
I look really after that it's light because the rest of the truck is heavy enough. Mm. I mean, when everything, especially with all the liquids, yeah, when, when you add you everything up, up it, yeah. it adds up real fast. Yeah. And given your coil springs as well, you'd, you'd be limited to how much weight as well. Actually, I'm quite happy with them now. At first I was thinking maybe it's a little bit too much. That's the heaviest Oldman Emu suspension. But you have the airbag in there too. And we got the airbag in there too. And the track runs really fine. Even when everything is really loaded on the corrugated road, it's really fine. When you want to cook a little bit or when you make a lunch break, you yeah, can use them a little bit. Right, right side uh, stop. Normally when we cook, we got an extra, extra fold up table. Oh, in here. Yeah, and then you can move the table around where you want it. Mm. Now we are on to the final stage of this feature. We have a trailer here. So this trailer, at a guess, because I don't really know what's in there yet, it's more of a, to carry your extra stuff. You've got so much stuff in there. So what are you actually carrying in here? That's our toy carrier. Toy carrier. Our toy carrier, yeah. So you got the boat. We got the boat and it's also a quad bike in there. Oh, you got a quad bike in here? There's a quad bike in there, yeah. Oh, awesome. Because our plan was normally uh, when we stay somewhere a little bit longer to use a quad bike to drive around. But now here, everywhere you find side, you can't use the quad bike and that's yeah. a little bit sad. Now we're carrying the quad bike around for, we drive yeah. around with that sometimes, but- There's a lot, a lot of restriction. Yeah, there. it's a lot of restriction. Our, and normally our plan was when we stay somewhere, you can go for a quick shopping into town, but can't yeah. do it. Now we use it mainly to, to get the boat into the water. Maybe in a country town, you might get away with it. Yeah, maybe in the north. <laughs> yeah. Before we have a look at the toys inside, so you got the boat on top. That's a decent sized boat. Yeah, um, I mean, I don't want to be in a little small thing out in the ocean. Well, it's, it's not too small and it's not too big to carry. Yeah, actually we can handle it quite easily with two people. I mean, we slide it down and tip it over and put it on. There's also a foldable, foldable trailer in there. Okay. And we set up a little trailer and we put it onto the trailer and then we can drive really? it around with the quad. Folds over so you can get the boat over. Yeah, that folds over and then I can get the quad bike out. Oh, okay. You've got to follow to get the quad bike out. Yeah. So th that'll explain this, um, that's this a, that's canvas a, or plastic. Yeah, plastic over. The cover. Over, like a cover that it don't get too dirty in there okay. when you go on the, on the dirt road. Max tracks. There isn't just four max tracks here. There's another four on the other side. Yeah. I mean, what I'm absolutely not understand is that people driving around here on the beaches with no max tracks or something else, because when you get bogged, mm -hmm. maybe you lose your car where you didn't want to spend $300 for a, max, a set of max track. Yeah. And we are driving most times alone and we like to drive also on the beach and it's only just in case, because I don't want to lose the truck. I can understand why you have eight as well. Like if I had eight, that'd be overkill yeah. because I usually travel with other people as well. Yeah. But because you are touring Australia by, your, by yourselves, yeah. just you and, you and Lexi. So obviously having an extra four yeah. can save you a lot of trouble. Yeah, actually. Because you have the trailer as well. Yeah, when, yeah. You, when you get really bored, Use them mm. for the trailer and for the car, then six are gone. But and also notice something else. You got these big truck tracks as well. Yeah, actually, we use them uh, a lot in Africa, or that's the thing what you get in, 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 in Europe. Mm. This, is, the, this is the stuff we usually see on construction sites here. You get a big yeah. concrete truck coming in, Yeah. they'll throw these out yeah. so they don't. But then they are sink. steel, and this is aluminium. Yeah, that's aluminium. Yeah, yeah. You can tell they're light. Yeah. The, 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 the main problem with that one is um, they're quite good in the, soft, uh, in the soft sand and in the dry sand, but when it gets muddy, you have no grip on it. Oh, it just ends up Yeah, you there. slide because it's, it's aluminium. It got some, some ribbles on it, mm. but you slide and there's the max tracks much, much, yeah, much better. Different tires on the back, but same size. Yeah. Max's trepidors. 
as I picked them up, I was a little bit oh scared. <laughs> not, oh, not really scared, but ooh, what's that? <laughs> They're <laughs> yeah. looking really rough. Yeah, it's like a comp track tire. Yeah. yeah, but now I'm pretty happy with them because now I got only uh, uh, 12 psi in it. And they looks like oh, maybe... Is that, is that 12 in there? Yeah, it's 12 yeah. PSI in it. It's not much weight on here, but... No, it's not so much weight. And the good thing with this tough tire, I mean, you've been at Twilight Cove, mm. and we've been oh, there, yeah. and everything is burned, yeah. and the bushes are really hard, and you can drive around maybe with your car, that you don't come uh, uh, into the sticks on the side. But, if but you with the trailer, trailer, you can't control it, and with this tire, doesn't matter. Yeah, and I did a tire on that stretch you're talking about too. Yeah. So we're inside the cab. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on here. So I guess we'll start with your communication. We bought here this handheld. For us it works well because it's more for Lexi and me when I got out with the boat. And these are 5 watts, so you get five watts, yeah. decent range. Is satellite off here? That's our satellite and it's, it's, a, it's a dual band, it's a normal one and a satellite phone. Uh, it's your scan gauge here? Uh, that's uh, the computer shift for the automatic gearbox. Oh, okay. Shows you the temperatures and what gear you are in and, uh, yeah, and how much throttle you use. That's so just a question, so with, with the trailer and, and the 37s and all the weight mm. and that, how much, um, how many kilometers per, uh, how we, many liters per yeah. hundred are you doing? Uh, actually, we are around 20 liters. 20 liters? Yeah. When that's, we're driving. That's understandable. Yeah, 80, uh, 90, 90 to 100, mm. we're on 20. But a lot of your stuff is like here, off road, right? You, yeah. you, that you're including that as your average. Yeah, but and the thing is, I'm not really. I mean, when the car needs 22 or 20, 23, mm. I don't care. I mean, when you get a, a big car, you have to expect. Yeah, you gotta expect the, the fuel. Yeah, yeah, because sometimes I don't understand it when they say they got an expensive car and they think, oh, I need 17 liters. I'm saying, okay. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> well, welcome to full driving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is this here? Is that that's, your airbags? Yeah, that's the airbags because I want the control inside of the cab. And I can fill it up with this one here and reduce them with that one. <laughs> Neat. That's yeah. awesome. That is awesome. What's this down here? Uh, that's a turbo timer. Oh, turbo timer. Yeah. Okay. The station system is a HEMA. Yeah. Which one's that one? Uh, the Hey, X1. Your gauges? Yeah, that's outside temperature. That's the voltage. This one, it's normally uh, the uh, automatic, but now I got it here. Okay. The engine oil temperature that fails. And that's uh, the excess temperature and the boost. And the boost, okay. Yeah, and I drive them. Um, oh, the EGT. Is yeah. It? Don't know how the yeah, EGT, yeah. I try to drive them um, around between 450, 500 temperature and 14, 16 okay. PSI. So Only when, when we have to be on the beach and we need the power then. You've gained a bit of room here from the, from the cutting? Yeah, because we cut it all the roof out. Yeah. And that is actually uh, also a fiberglass plate. It's a really strong plate. And that's also the, uh, the bottom from the roof rack. And this is the escape hatch. <laughs> yeah, that's more. When we got a dog, the dog can look through okay. there. And but that's the latch uh, we saw on the other side. And to yeah. seal it, you've got the canvas between. Yeah. That's a good idea. And then you've got the flex on it. Yeah, that, so it that everything can move. So they're actually flexing independently. Yeah. Apartments up here, right? Yeah, a little one. Center console. This looks rather large. Oh, it's a little at fridge. That. Look out. This is a custom fridge. Yeah, I built that. <laughs> because I'm not allowed to put the bait for fishing into the rear fridge. And so I decided I have to build my own fridge. And normally when I don't have, when I have bite in it, here's uh, another lid in it. Oh, and so the bottom part the... is a freezer and the top part it's a, it's a cooler. So you keep the bait frozen so it doesn't stink. Yeah. And it's a compressor fridge and the compressor is under my seat. So as we get out, these chairs we're sitting in were pretty comfy. 
they're definitely not standard. Yeah, German company, Schirmann. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's quite comfy. Q&A time, we've got Coke versus Pepsi here. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Okay. So, my first question. You obviously have something to do with building these kind of things, or yeah. experience, because you've done most of this yourself, and it's very thought out. So have you done a lot of, you've obviously done this before. Yeah, I mean, we were traveling for a long, long time, and so uh, after a while, because I'm a blacksmith, and I was starting to build cars for myself, and then for friends, and it was what was getting more and more, and now I had my company for 30 years, and yeah, and we're building cars, maybe not like this, mm. but cabins, and uh, also we, we are doing- Th Things like this then? Yeah, things like this, and we, we are cutting a lot of wagons in half, and build the cabin right onto, uh, like right the rear the cabin, and stuff. Yeah. yeah, to the front cabin, mm. that you get a real nice big camper. So, what made you choose the 80 series wagon for this particular build? Uh, I really like the comfort of the 80 series, and especially with the coils. It's sometimes the, the problem is when you drive a lot of uh, the sealed roads. It's a little bit twisty and not so so well mm. but when you go in the bush it's it's really nice yeah did you have an 80 before this 80 i have a it? few 80s at home okay because i got a petrol one and i got another diesel one with uh, with only a pop top on it what would you say are the top three things you've done to this vehicle i think uh, the vivex extensions that's really nice and giving you more space as well yeah giving giving me more space because basically your, your extension is basically the size of this hatch here isn't yeah it? that's right and yeah i mean i done so much to the car <laughs> it's really <laughs> it's really hard to say mm. i think the tires are maybe a little bit too big but all the rest works well with the suspension and do you think you could drop down to a 35 and your ratio will be all right? I think so, yeah. Mm. Because I don't care when it goes a little bit higher uh, in the refs on, on the sealed road, doesn't mm. matter. I mean, yeah. because we are not driving very fast. We're driving slow. I mean, we got time. Yeah. Have you traveled anywhere else other than Australia and North Africa? Uh, actually, we've been the year, uh, 18 years ago, we were on a longer trip. And we've been to Australia for a year. We were five months in New Zealand and then one and a half years in North and Central America. For people who are watching now who, you know, Europeans who are keen to ship their vehicles over, or even people in the States to ship the vehicle to here, to Australia, yeah. to do what you're doing, what's your, what's your top advice for them? Is there anything they should be aware of that... I think this time it was a little bit tricky to get in but I think that was mainly the fault of the broker but I think when you bring a clean car I think that's the main important thing bring a clean car because when they found leaves or grass or mud oh, then they're okay. getting really serious when yeah. you bring the car in quarantine part but our one was just finished with the build and everything was totally clean and that was no problem but when you come over bring a clean car I mean mm. and I think that's a that's a, the main important thing it's got to fit in a 40 foot container pretty easy 40 foot high cube yep mm. yeah oh high cube yeah yeah high height. cube yeah yeah of course yeah and they because we we ordered only a high cube uh, 2 meter 50 but the broker he was getting a 290 for the same price and it was totally easy drive it in and uh, it's quite narrow mm. you have to crawl through the window to to get it in yeah, and, imagine. yeah i was driving the car 
into the container in Germany and also here in Australia out of the car, uh, out of the container. Okay. Yeah. Not much margin for error. <laughs> yeah, actually, in, here in Australia, they said, oh, no, safety and health issues, you can't do it by yourself. Mm. But after they looked into the container, they said, uh, maybe you can come along and get your car out of the container. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much for bringing the, this magnificent ID series yeah. on here. No worries. And the toy trailer. <laughs> awesome build. Yeah. So you want to know more about this build, you can uh, visit the web page that has all the details about the vehicle. And I'll have a lot more build photos as well, which I'll get off you. Yep. And even some, look, we'll put a link to your company as well so people can see the builds that you do. Yeah. Because I think a lot of people will be interested, yeah, especially look. Europeans who might want to come down. Um, so, yeah. Thanks very much for watching. You can subscribe right here. And if you'd like to support the creation of content like this, you can head to patreon.com slash Ronnie Dahl. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next video.